Do you want a paper planner this year but are unsure which one to get? By the end of this video, you'll know if my brand new to market planner is right for you. And if it's not, I will personally help you find the best one that works for you. Hi guys, I'm Heather, the creator of Sprout a Planner. For the best advice on how to use your planner and how to live an intentional life, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I put out new videos every month. For the 2021 calendar year, there are three cover options. Celebration, which has a gold foil, blooming, and also all the designs are on the back too. And black tile. There are also two different layouts. We have our daily planner, which is gonna be thicker because there's gonna be more pages. And the weekly spread, weekly planner, which is gonna be thinner because there's less pages. The inside has a pocket. Next, we get into the front pages. They include an introduction with the story of how Sprouted Planner was created, how to use this planner, including the core themes of intentionality and reflection, and a review of the components. Next, we have intentions versus goals. So I talk about the difference and how intentions are a mindset and mental determination where goals focus on the outcome and something you plan to achieve. Intentions are closely tied to your values. And if you are goal setting, it works best to set goals that start with your values and flow from your intentions. So for example, and I include this a little bit down here, but family is one of my values. So when my dad was diagnosed with ALS, my intention was to always show up, be present, and have those hard conversations about life, loss, death, past hurts, etc. So no matter how hard it would be and the fear of watching someone I love so much decline, my intention were those things. My goal was to visit once a week. I also include little calls to action I called be intentional. So for this one, it's to identify your values, then your intentions, and if you're goal setting, to let it flow from there. So I've included a line blank page over here for you to do just that. Okay, before I go on, I wanna know, are you a goal setter? Why or why not? Comment below and let me know. Next three pages or spreads are what's included as part of the monthly spread checklist that you will see in a minute. The first being people. I truly believe we're created to be in relationship. And if our relationships aren't good, it affects the rest of our life too. 2020 has certainly shown us the importance of being in connection. So this section is about your people and what a couple great authors have called a home team. It's 15 to 20 people you are closest to and do life with the most. Time goes by so fast and can be easy to let these relationships slip. So the, the be intentional call to action is to list your home team out. And if you want to take it a step further, write your intentions for each person and how and how often you want to stay in touch. So whether that is a phone call, a texting once a week, getting together you know, once a week or at least monthly to list that out. Next, things. It's the random things of everyday life. So you got your birthdays, your shopping, your concerts, your plays, your seasonal to-dos, hunting openers, whatever. You can list them here by the month. year list. It's kind of like a bucket list for the year. So I always approach this as thinking, okay, by the end of next year, what do I want to have done, experienced or felt, etc. So maybe you want to go to more concerts or actually plant a garden this year or finally get your will done. 
Uh, that is on my list for 2021. Then we have the 2021 calendar, Year to Glance, and the U.S. Holidays and Observations. There's also a couple lines here to list any holidays or observations that are important to you that are not listed here. Next is two blank line pages that you can do whatever with. I am planning on using these pages by listing my yearly priorities. I have three, maybe four of them that I will be putting right here. All right, we are going to get into the actual weeks here. So I am going to start with the daily planner. So here is the daily spread. So up top is the date. And then there is an unlabeled box for you to put your intentions for the day or whatever you want to do. Maybe you want to put a daily focus in there or a reminder that it's your mom's birthday uh, is left unlabeled so that you can choose what you want to do with it. Then we have the daily schedule from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m with the half hour marks built in there. Next is the blank space for notes, doodles, meal planning, whatever you wanna do. Underneath that is a bunch of spaces and check boxes for to-dos or reminders. You'll see in the weekly spread too, I put these in two columns uh, in case you wanna break out your to-dos into different themes or focuses like personal and work or to do's and errands, whatever it may be. On the bottom is another blank box that you can put your reflections for the day. Or if you want to put reminders for the next day or your gratitude, again, left unlabeled, you can do whatever you want with it or not do anything at all. The weekends do share a page. So you have Saturday up top, Sunday, under that, you will see that they are both days still have the components of the daily. So you have your top and bottom box. You could put your schedule there and then your to do's there and a little space for notes or whatnot. I have heard a bunch of feedback in the planner community about people wanting their Saturdays and Sundays to be on separate pages. So I may or may not be giving weekends their own page starting in the 21, 22 academic version of the planner. So here's what I want to know. If you are a daily planner, comment below if you like having the shared page or if you would love to have each day, your Saturday and Sunday on its own page. I really want to know. All right, moving back to weekly. I'm going to start in January. All right, so weekly, here's the weekly spread and has a lot of the same elements of the daily spread. So there is the box at the top right underneath the date for those intentions or whatnot. Um, then the bottom box at the very end of the week and bottom of the page that you can do for reflections or whatever you want to do. Um, on the left hand side, you have the schedule. So you have Monday start through Sunday. Each day gets its own box. Now you have three circles in each day that you can use however you want. If you meal plan, you could write your meal for the day um, or, you know, multiple meals for the day. If there's something you really want to get done that's important for that day, you can put that as a task. Um, just again, left blank so that you can do what you want with it. The right hand side is your check boxes. Again, in the two columns, if you want to differentiate between the two lists. Below this is a bunch of blank space for you to write your notes, doodle, put stickers. It's totally up to you. I am a weekly planner user and I'm so excited about this spread. So I like writing my to-dos for the entire week and not just the day. Um, I also meal plan and so I'm excited to probably on this very bottom one um, to write my meals for the week. 
I also don't plan my day by the hour and just rather put appointments or get togethers, which really don't take up that much space. Um, so I really don't need that much daily space. So even when I was working and had a ton of meetings, we used Outlook. Um, so it was totally separate. All my meetings and all that were in a completely different system. So I just use this for personal stuff. Once my kids go to school uh, and my business takes off more, I may switch to a daily, but right now a weekly fits me best. After each month is the guided reflection questions. The first three questions are the same for each month. The next two questions change from month to month and one or both of them always tie into the theme, that subtle theme I talked about with the monthly spread. The last handful of questions um, though, what are you listening to? What are you watching? What are you reading? And what are you looking forward to? Those are just um, for fun. So they're just things that are very relevant to your life right now and just for fun. Um, and it will be a fun thing to look back on too. The very last question, um, and again, these, these little handful of questions are gonna be the same month by month as well. Um, so what are you feeling challenged or worried by? It's really powerful to get that down on paper. It is also really powerful when you look back on these reflections um, in the next year or even a couple months from now to see how how that went. Um, so these things you were feeling worried about, um, how did that turn out? I just think that's really nice to be able to look back onto that. Nearing the end. If I can find it. We have our December reflections followed immediately by your year end reflections. I just did this for 2020 and it is one of my favorite things to do all year. So you have your um, reflection guided questions for year end. And then lastly, you have 33 blank lined pages in the very back, which you can see is really a lot that you can use. So that is the inside of the planner. Sprouted Planner was founded from an incredibly challenging time in my life. I didn't have the time, the capacity, or the desire to goal set, track my habits, or the many other things that you find in planners on the market today. It needed to be simple and minimal but I still needed a place to write down my schedule and to-dos because those things never stop. I also wanted to remember everything that was happening and not be checked out during this time. So intention setting and reflecting on a monthly basis were really key for me. I'm very grateful that I have a record of everything that happened during this time. Conversations that I had, things I felt proud of and challenged by, especially since this was the last years of my dad's life and the beginning years of my daughter's life. I was in such a fog and time went by so fast that unless I wrote things down, I don't remember many of the little things. So this planner is especially for you if you are in a tough season of life right now, or if you've lost your appetite for the goal crushing, slay all day achieving mentality. Let me be clear, if you love those things and do those things, that is not at all bad. But I also know there's a whole bunch of people who are not into that. It's for you if you want to take the time or like to take the time to reflect on where your time has gone and be more intentional about your days. It's for you if your relationships are one of your highest values. And lastly, it's for you if you like minimal design and color in and of itself, or because you like adding your own design and color. It's my deepest desire that this planner meets you where you're at and doesn't add to your overwhelm, but brings you some peace of mind. If Sprouted Planner is for you, then I want to offer you an exclusive deal of 20% off just for watching this video. You can only find that in the link below. 
This is on top of any other offer that I may already be offering. If you want thoughtful advice on living an intentional, reflective, and simple life, sign up for my twice a month newsletter using the link in the description below. If you like this video, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel and share with your friends. Until next time, thanks everyone!